Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to uh, start this event, the uh, workshop, the ITU and WHO workshop on uh, intelligence for health. This is the eighth uh, event that uh, we have uh, uh, done uh, so far, but it's the first one in Latin America. And, uh, myself as Brazilian, I'm very glad to, to have it in my own country. Uh, so we're going to start with the opening session where we have uh, several uh, high-level uh, keynotes that uh, will be delivered to us. Um, and uh, uh, I would like to just uh, uh, go on to, to the business uh, and uh, um, ask uh, uh, Mr. Leonardo de Moraes, President of Anatel, to give us some words. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here and to have this opportunity. And uh, I'm going to start. I would like to give my compliments to Maria Claudia Ferrari to the Department of Technologies and Sustainable and Social Development Programs of the Secretariat of Applied Technologies. Alberto Tomasi, Director of the Department of Monitoring Assessment uh, Jesus in Brazil, Ministry of Health. Uh, Maria Almiron, Acting FAO Representative for Brazil. Thomas uh, Degadi, uh, FGA volunteer. And with these compliments, uh, let me allow me to point to give my best compliments to all of you. Uh, artificial intelligence is one of the breakthrough uh, technology of our times. AI is transforming the way we interact, consume information, and obtain goods and services. Once the digital flows are being combined with the doll of the cognitive area of computing, we should better think how to foster uh, in, in AI uh, that expands human cap capabilities and experiences. So we have some important questions to, to meet. For example, how to incorporate trust in technology in order to assure privacy, transparency, and security? How can AI, AI promote inclusiveness? For sure, AI has an important role to play in the healthcare offerings for the future. AI in healthcare allows physicians and health facilities to access vast data sets and ultimately use with potential life-saving information such as precise diagnosis intensive care procedures and remote medical procedures. Together with new computing capacity, it allows to analyze large data sets and trends and even make predictions through machine learning that is designed to identify potential outcomes. As a regulator in charge of the telecommunication sector, one of our duties is to improve and foster connectivity. Connectivity is one of the most important foundations of any digital agenda. Nevertheless, connectivity is not an end in itself. We should think more about meaningful connection, which requires a humanist approach. A connectivity related to the society needs scale. Connectivity to save, connectivity to protect, connectivity to care, to include and enable. Not only to create wealth, but also to better distribute it. Within this perspective, 5G is a powerful tool for overcoming the challenge associated to the achievement of the so-called sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. The 5G spectrum option we are designing in Anatel approach fundamental elements for high-speed value-added communication that will contribute for the revolution that comes with AI in its applications to help. We all need to be conscious of the potentials of AI in its transforming capacity to offer better quality health services to our population. Certainly, there are several cha challenges to be addressed. For example, the ethical, ethical issues in the applications of AI to healthcare, the sufficient degree in terms of standardization levels, the government mechanisms, and many other issues that are very important to be addressed. Still, I'm very confident that opportunities, opportunities like this event may contribute 
to this major task. And for this, years, this reason, I congratulate ITU uh, and wish you all a very productive and inspiring decade. Thank you very much, and I, I wish you the best for all of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Well, nice for this uh, interesting address, uh, well, highlighting that there is a convergence of technologies and ICTs play a key role there. However, people should get the center, so I think it's a, a very important uh, key message. Uh, now, I'd like to invite uh, Maria Claudia Ferrari de Castro, who is uh, uh, with the Ministry of uh, uh, Science Technology, is a very long name for the ministry, sorry, apologies for that. Uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation and Communications of Brazil, in the uh, director in the Department uh, of the Technologies for Sustainable and uh, the Social Developments to give us a few words. Good morning. On behalf of Minister Marcos Pontes from Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovations and Communications, MCTIC, I would like to thank the organization for the invitation to participate in this workshop on Artificial Intelligence for Health, a subject of great relevance in Brazil and in the world due to the great impact it has generated in the health service transformation. I would I also would like to congratulate the International Telecommunication Union and the World Health Organization for the creation of the focal group on artificial intelligence for health that has a lot to contribute to improving the health sector. The discussion about the potential of this technology is not new. It is a field of knowledge from the 50s. However, the latest developments, such as those in the fields of machine learning and deep learning, has made feasible innovations and high-impact high applications. And the high speed of change makers live in the future. Artificial intelligence is revolutionizing the way the healthcare industry works to improve quality in care and deliver better results in lower costs. The technology offers an automated method to understanding data. However, there are doctors, researchers, and institutions that take advantage of this information of to provide better care, treatments, and results that may bring better benefits to patients. AI brings countless opportunities from its ability to recognize patterns from a large amount of data and images. It can assist in decision-making process to detect risk groups, prediction of disease, diagnostic support, prioritizing the most critical cases, and even the follow-up of care. Also, from an operational point of view, it can monitor process, propose optimization, reduce and even eliminate waste, becoming a major health management tool. We have observed very significant advances. Some results have drawn the attention of policymakers and companies, provoking a real race the world leadership in AI, and at the same time discussion about the implications of their use in different areas, especially for health management. The use of health data to feed the systems of this nature also raises concerns in the field of ethics and protection of personal data, highlighting about the importance of establishing safeguards and forms of monitoring to avoid bias and discrimination. As is known, MCTIC has been deepened into AI subject in recognition of the enormous potential of this technology. In the international field, we have observed with satisfaction how this issue has gained attention in numerous international organizations, as is the case here. 
MCTIC has tried to engage in such international discussion. In this case, I highlight the following initiatives and partnerships. We have been working with UNESCO, hiring specialized consulting to support for the proposition of a Brazilian artificial intelligence strategy. And on December 2019, took place in Sao Paulo, a regional forum on artificial intelligence in Latin America and the Caribbean called Artificial Intelligence Tour, a Humanistic Approach. We accepted the OECD principles on artificial intelligence, and with them, the study called Review of Digital Transformation, Going Digital in Brazil, was conducted. Also, in domestic field, MCTIC has developed public policies to support the development development and applications of these technologies, such as support to startups and projects, and the creation of 88 AI centers, one specifically for health. After approval of the National Plan on Internet of Things and the General Data Protection Law, the government advances to regulate the use of artificial intelligence in Brazil. The MCTIC opened for a public consul consultation to define the National Artificial Intelligence Strategy. The plan is to discuss ways to enhance the benefits of technology and mitigate its negative impacts. In this point of view, the present event proves to be extremely relevant and timely. MCTIC is available to engage in this discussion and contribute to its purpose aiming to the construction of the AI policy. In conclusion, I wish success in, this, in these works and thank once again the opportunity to be present on behalf of Minister Marcus Pontes. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Claude, for these uh, words and uh, also that uh, the engagement of MCTIC to, uh, in this process and uh, AI and its, its developing and the cooperation at the level national and international cooperation. So it's very important uh, to hear this message. I would like now to uh, invite uh, Mr. Alberto Tomasi Diniz Tiafensi, who is Director at the Department of Monitoring and Assessment of SUS. Uh, in the Minister of Health in Brazil. Good morning. Uh, my apologies because I will speak in Portuguese. Me sinto mais confortável. É um tema tão delicado. Quero agradecer a OPAS pela, pelo convite ao Ministério. Quero para, é, parabenizar o Dr. Leonardo, Dr. Maria Cláudia. Doutora Maria Almorim e o Dr. Thomas por estarem aqui discutindo algo que está realmente transformando não só a sociedade, mas como a, a saúde e a saúde pública. O Ministério da Saúde, é, o SUS, tem 30 anos de dados sendo coletados e muito pouco analisados. O, a inteligência artificial ela está vindo para nos ajudar não só a melhorar o diagnóstico para os usuários, ela está vindo para nos ajudar a escolher o melhor serviço de saúde e aonde o serviço tem que estar. Nós temos trabalhos com o próprio NCTIC, que está avançando bastante em IoT, e isso nos deixa muito orgulhosos. A Câmara Saúde 4.0, que está trazendo a parceria com universidades e instituições para discutir essas melhorias e esses temas para a saúde pública do Brasil. E temos também uh, algumas parcerias que já estão em andamento com instituições, não só para a inteligência artificial, mas para uma coisa que o Brasil ainda tem muito déficit, que é para o pessoal saber utilizar. Então, a capacitação de recursos humanos para Uh, inteligência artificial, machine learning, ela tá sendo, tá, está acontecendo em paralelo com as inovações que estão vindo. 
nós temos um sistema de saúde universal e para que ele possa continuar universal e que seja cada vez mais de qualidade, a tecnologia é aliada, a tecnologia não só para diagnóstico, para sabermos aonde o serviço público de saúde tem que estar para estar mais próximo do cidadão. Espero que esses próximos três dias sejam dias de discussões muito ricas, que possam contribuir não só para o nosso para nossa melhoria, como o Ministério da Saúde, mas como sociedade e como pesquisa para todos nós. Trago um abraço do ministro Mandetta e desejo a todos nós um excelente, uma excelente oficina de discussão e trabalho. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Mr. Defense, for these uh, remarks. And uh, uh, I think it's important that you mention capacitation and uh, uh, technology advancements uh, bring a challenge to let people up to date, up to speed into the new areas. So it's very important to uh, have a strong investment in that area. I would like now to uh, invite uh, Maria Miron, who is the acting power representative for Brazil, to give us a few words and uh, also being our host. Uh, I, I just advance and thank you for having us here in uh, Brasilia. Thank you, Simone. And uh, following my colleagues, I'm going to make this open remark in Portuguese. É um grande prazer para para mim e para a doutora Gross, que é a representante da Organização Pan-Americana de Saúde, Organização Mundial da Saúde receber vocês, eh, os visitantes, e ser parte de, da abertura de cerimônia aqui nesta importante reunião. Quando falamos de inteligência artificial, uma das uh, primeiras coisas que aparecem na nossa mente é a questão dos robôs, uh, a questão de eh, os carros que são guiados automaticamente, Alexa, mas Inteligência artificial é muito mais que isso e tem muitos campos para serem explorados, um deles o da saúde. E é, consideramos que esse campo é, é vasto e que tem muito trabalho a ser feito. E principalmente desde o ponto de vista da cobertura universal de saúde, que é um dos nossos lemas de, de trabalho na, na organização. Desculpa. Então, desejamos que essa cerimônia, que, que, essa, que esse evento aqui possa ser aproveitado por os órgãos de Estado aqui presente, pelos colegas do, do Ministério da Saúde, que também tem um trabalho, como foi apresentado por Alberto, de larga data. E por isso, agradecer novamente ao comitê organizador por terem selecionado o Brasil eh, para este para esta discussão. Esperamos que os pontos que sejam levantados aqui sejam também de ajuda, sejam de utilidade, tanto para o Ministério da Saúde como para os outros dois órgãos de Estado que nos acompanham. Eh, desejo a todos um, um bom trabalho e que também aproveitem Brasília, que tem muito para oferecer. Obrigada. Maria, for this uh, welcoming and uh, encouraging words. Uh, and now I'd like to uh, go to Thomas Vigand. Thomas is the, the chairman of the focus group on AI for Health. Uh, also, he is the director of the uh, Fraunhofer Heinrich Hertz Institute in Germany. Thomas, please. Uh, hello, good morning, friends of AI, friends of health, and friends of AI for Health. Uh, glad to be here. We had yesterday a wonderful day. You could see the fantastic architecture of Brasilia. Uh, somebody who very interest, for somebody who's very interested, it was a remarkable day. So let me tell you a story, and actually there are multiple stories here. Uh, it starts with uh, May 2018. 
Um, the ITU hosts uh, a big congress. Now it's very big. It started small with like 400 people. Now it's uh, 3,000. Probably this year will be even more, 6,000 on AI for good. AI for good is the idea that you can use AI for bad things, but you should use it for good things. And um, one of the set tracks there was about health. And there were 15 health projects being presented. They all looked great. Uh, but the question arose, what happens afterwards, after you're done with the research at the university? And it became clear that uh, there needs, there's a need for benchmarking to understand the quality of these AI solutions. And there is a need for uh, regulation and for understanding their impact, etc. So the idea of the focus group was born and uh, we quickly realized that we need friends of AI and we need friends of health. And we need to have them work together, although don't, they don't speak each other's uh, language. And that happened, so we created the focus group between uh, the ITU and the World Health Organization. And uh, we have now our eighth meeting here. Um, so now the second story starts. Um, the size of the internet is actually um, last, uh, well, 2018, so moving more, it's uh, 1.8 times 10 to the power of 21 bytes per year. That number is so large, nobody, none of you can deal with that means. Not, not me as well. Well, I give you a number. Running the internet, the ICT devices, including their production and data centers, takes about 11% of total electricity in 2018 and 19, it will be more. Fun fact, it's not, has nothing not to do with it. Uh, nuclear energy, at this point, provides also 11% of the total energy. It's just a coincidence, okay? Not the not all the electrons go the same way. It's just a coincidence. I'll, I'll get to that. Now, let me close the uh, uh, the circle here. So, at the ITU, we have been standardizing video compression standards, uh, H.264 and H.265. Um, H.264 was standardized in 2003. It was actually kicked off in 2001, and we talked about it at our study group 16 meeting in Porto Seguro uh, in Brazil. And um, what happened is the following. Uh, we produced these documents, and uh, it went from zero bytes on the internet to 55% of all bytes on the internet. And uh, we just did another one uh, in uh, 2013, and the next one is coming this year. Um, if you do the math and you count the 450 nuclear power plants and you account them for 11% of the bits on, uh, for, for, for running the internet, you can, we can see that the document that was present is now run by 250 nuclear power plants. So that's the power of scaling. Okay, now the ne next question comes. What about AI for health? Can we scale it? People have mentioned all the benefits you could potentially achieve, but these benefits came through, you know, university projects, uh, companies making, doing research. But how do we take these things and make them scale worldwide? So, well, you know, you have to have some app repository, some way of people downloading digital health into the health system. And, um, we need digital health at skills around the world, and what needs to be done to make it? That brings us to the focus group. Uh, the focus group, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm uh, happy to share it. We have six vice chairs. We're looking for more vice chairs to, to help to get the work done. Uh, we are supported by WHO and ITU, and um, we have uh, contacts, for instance, with the ENP, the National Association of Na National Public Health Institutes, regulators, the Inter-Academy Partnership, so the science academies uh, uh, in the world. And uh, we, we go through AI for Good and the World Health Summit and also get support from philanthropic foundations. Um, we, we have been created in July 2018. The goal was to benchmark AI solutions. And that benchmarking then uh, is relevant to other Parts and uh, we are now realizing that our task is much bigger than just benchmark. Uh, so we are bringing our work to the regulatory processes for medical devices and other aspects. 
uh, we are planning a meeting together with the International Medical Device Regulators Forum in Singapore in March, two months from now. We are also uh, bringing AI. We are also investigating AI for health for digital epidemiology, meaning you have these what if questions. What if the virus outbreaks happens happens and I do this, right? You need answers to that, and uh, we have AI models for that, and also the health delivery system that involves uh, telemedicine and aspects that are connect, that are relevant to when AI for health is connected and it's being used in communications. Let me give you an idea on the, from the regulatory area, how that could. Um, this is an example of one of the groups that we are looking at and one of the problems. It's a, uh, an example benchmark for diagnostic support of for breast cancer. Uh, this is a regulatory uh, um, a view on the topic. So uh, we are looking at tumor infiltrating lymphocytes that are indicated for eliminating tumor cells and we want to quantify them in, uh, um, in molecular pathology images. Um, and uh, this quantification is relevant to patient prognosis, estimation, and therapy. So far, this has been done by eyeballing by pathologists. Uh, and uh, we actually want to replace that by machine learning. And what we are looking at is the entire process. So these are the histological slides that are created by tissue samples. And then you are going through the entire process of uh, uh, diagnostics, including the pathology. And there are 350 million diagnostic cases worldwide. So we're not talking about small numbers. And this is, has been the evaluation so far, either a male or a female sitting there and counting. And uh, so if you look at the problem, it's really an image segmentation problem that involves doctors. Um, so you have to identify and classify cancer and you estimate the immune cells. And uh, there's a classification by the World Health Organization on classification uh, for tumors, for example. So here is what we've done by AI uh, in this group. And you can see that uh, you, the AI has uh, taken the original image and has marked the cancer cells and has marked the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. So in order to get there, you need to consider the entire AI process. AI typically learns as supervised machine learning, where you would uh, annotate a data set, you would mark uh, the gold standard, and you would then, given that gold standard, uh, uh, have the machine learn uh, relative to the reference. So how do you get to the gold standard in a field like medicine? It's not simple. So we've been in contact with the FDA over this topic here. And uh, the FDA has told us that we should have a precise annotation description. It has to be useful if we just find a random pathologist to follow that annotation description in order to basically make a reproducible annotation. And that involves all those things you learn in, in, at the university uh, on these topics. And they asked us to have seven pathologists do the annotation. Seven. I asked why seven. I just, oh, I don't know. Oh. So we have seven independent annotations by pathologists using a reproducible annotation description that then is being used in order to be the gold reference. And that differs. So we were basically, we're basically testing whether the AI is the eighth pathologist. It's equivalent in performance or even better than those pathologists. And so we would then come up to these annotation results. Uh, and uh, at the end, we would benchmark this is our process. You have your data, your public data, you train your model, you submit it to the platform. We have created the platform, you test data, you receive the evaluation, and then you have the results. And we've done that, and it looks like as if the AI is working well here. So we tried that the first time going along. Um, so the focus group, as I mentioned, started in May 2018, um, and we had ever since uh, uh, seven meetings. Now we are here in Brasilia at the eighth meeting. Um, we have published about it at Lancet and other places. Um, you can uh, then, our next meetings are planned for March and May, and uh, we're going to go on for September, uh, November. And uh, uh, 
depends on where we go, for example, the crowd changes. And uh, the great thing is that uh, uh, we are able to, main, to retain people from wherever we go. So some people from our Zanzibar meeting are here, some people from our India meeting are here. So we keep on collecting interesting people, interested people around the world. One of the things that I mentioned is um, uh, the regulatory considerations part uh, on medical devices. We have so far put uh, uh, a strong focus on that, uh, uh, in addition to the digital epidemiology. We have created a working group, and uh, that working group consists of a representative from the EMA of Europe, uh, FDA of the US, uh, BFAM Germany, HPMA of China, and CDSC of India. Um, we are creating quite a few documents in this area. Uh, I just copied you one table that gives you an idea what might happen in AI. We may just have new classes of medical devices. Uh, you know, the, the robot that does the surgery by itself in the future. Uh, so we have to be able to deal with that and we have to also understand uh, how past devices are to be classified um, with regard to that. Um, we just held two weeks ago a workshop in Berlin um, on the standardized assessment of framework on AI for Health. We had about 50 participants on site and uh, about 15, 20 remotes. And uh, I believe it was a very successful workshop and we have people engaged producing documents on a number of subjects. Um, you can find all the documents. I think by now we must have created some 300, 400 documents in, in this area uh, uh, at the uh, at our website, and it's free, so you can it's open and free to participate. Um, we have decided to conduct most of our meetings online. Um, that has to do with uh, efficiency. Um, so, if you can contribute to the work by logging into uh, a Zoom, we are using Zoom at the moment, Zoom a meeting, a virtual meeting, you have shared online documents, you can very effectively participate. Our meetings are important to bring everybody together and to take important decisions, but most of the work, most of the contents of documents is being created by uh, online collaboration. That has also the benefit that uh, it reduces time to travel, and we've learned that you know, a physician who is uh, working at a clinic is very tough to get for, for a week to any place. But you might get a few hours out of them every week uh, if they can participate in an online uh, system. And we have done, made that system online uh, uh, so it's, it works quite well now. Um, so let me tell you the idea for the focus group. How are we, should, how are we planning to do the work that I outlined? Um, basically, I would like you to um, focus on to the focus group it has uh, two work two groups that do the actual work. One group is the working groups, and the other one is the topic groups. And the idea is that um, we have uh, a horizontal and vertical problem setting. So we have a um, vertical problem setting where in an AI for health application. You need to do everything right from the data collection over the data annotation, the data assessment, the metric, the training, the tests, the clinical evaluation, and then the update process of the whole thing once again. And it has to work perfect for your AI for health topic, right? On the other hand, as a regulator, as uh, practitioners, as a company, as a university, as anybody participating in this, you need generic rules what to do. You need to understand what software, what method can I apply to basically assess my data. Is this AI for health approach ethical? Um, can, how can I pass regulatory uh, approval, etc., etc.? So we have basically created two types of groups. One is called working group, WG, and one is called topic group, TG. So the topic groups are those vertical groups and uh, they deal with practical AI for health. I just listed a few, I think that this is no more up to date. It's changing all the time. We are getting lots of support for um, these topic groups. 
and they encounter all of these problems. And what we try to do then is to bring in this horizontal view that, that is cross-cutting across all these topics which is done in the working groups. And the working groups are working now on a number of documents and an AI for Health ethics consideration document, an AI for Health regulatory consideration document, AI for Health requirement specification, software life cycle, data specification, like the requirements, acquisition, annotation, training and test, handling and sharing practices, AI training best practices, AI for Health evaluation, like how is the evaluation done, the technical test, the technical test metric and the clinical evaluation and then uh, AI for health scale up and adoption and also uh, applications platform mobile applications cloud-based applications and this is how it all been brought together and so one more thing that I also want you to remind you when you ask yourself well yeah that's all that sounds fine but what's new about it what is the actual um, how to say different thing with AI compared to the past. The, for instance, if I go into regulation, 99% of the FDA's approval is actually uh, using a process called 510K where you would basically say this MRT device is very similar to that other MRT device. I just changed a few things. Then you get clearance through a very streamlined process. Well, you can't do that with AI. You have a deep neural network that makes a diagnostic prediction, like for um, a breast cancer that I showed you. You can say my other deep neural network is doing roughly the same, please do clearance in a very simple process. It's not possible. That means 99% of all the regulation processes are actually not working anymore. And so, and then the second problem comes, which is this, this has been our view of AI somehow and I'm using it for aut automated driving. I thought that may be simpler. Um, so you wanna understand that, uh, you know, there's a speed limit of 30, you run it through your neural network, and then you basically get your thing up and running. But this, isn't, this is actually not what is gonna make AI really strong. What is gonna make AI really strong is the updates, is what happens in real life. So you bring this speed limit measurement device into all these cars and they all going to do use they all going to use the ai and they report back and based on that you update and the amount of data you get is 10,000 a million times more than the amount of data you had when you started with your ai development and the same is happening in health when you bring this cancer uh, detector into the hospital and it's being used, the amount of data it sees is so much larger than it saw when it was developed. And that has to be included into the process of making AI work and also regulating it, understanding it. And then there's the other aspect, which is that if the AI has an impact, it changes the underlying distribution it's based on. Meaning if you have an epidemiology case, an outbreak of a, of a virus, and you have a decision that you make regarding that, that influences the statistics for the next round to predict what's going to happen. So you have to address basically that you have vast amount of data coming in when you use the AI, and second, that it changes the di probability distribution if it has an impact. And the third aspect is actually that you then have to basically also consider that this AI is distributed and it's distributed around the world. And the update part gives you this process where you can include populations around the world if it's used in all that. And if you bring that all together, there's a big chance to have an inclusive, well-working AI for health system for every single disease out there. And this is what we try to do. And thank you very much and uh, open for questions. Thank you, Thomas, for this uh, run on the, uh, on the goals and the uh, objectives and some issues around the work we're trying to do, which you can see is very simple.
Um, so, uh, well, we so thought when we started, it was much simpler than what we realized. It's uh, the community building aspect that is very important in getting more people on board and helping improve the framework horizontal and the uh, uh, vertical uh, issues that we're facing. So um, we, we still have some time for, for this advanced this session. I don't know if you'd like to ask the panelists uh, at this point of time. Uh, Monique. Hi, um, thank you for the presentation. They're all really interesting. I just was curious if there's a similar type of collaboration between the Telecommunications National Agency and the Ministry of Health in Brazil. It's doing something similar to what we're doing. So bringing together the experts from the different fields for AI. Um, thank you for, very much for the question. Uh, it's, it's, is very timing because the timing is really good because uh, recently uh, the Ministry of Health just uh, asked Canada about some data. Uh, of course, we have to anonymize those data because of the base of, uh, of course, of telecommunications access, especially mobile access. Uh, so we ask the involvement also of the uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation, and Communications, uh, so we can uh, do this work in tripartite. Thank you. Uh, any more questions, points, or participation? Seems not, so we are a little bit early in the agenda. I would like just to have a round of applause for the, the table. It was a very good, very honor to, to have you all here. Uh, I hope you can stay as much as possible to, for the next, next sessions. Uh, again, just uh, as a note that today is the workshop and the next uh, uh, today is it to be uh, the working group, uh, I mean, the technical work of the uh, focus group. So that's where we're going to get into those issues that Thomas was mentioning, the different uh, uh, vertical groups and uh, uh, see the progress that they have made in the meantime. And uh, so we get a report on that. So it's quite uh, uh, informative, I think. Uh, might uh, also uh, welcome you to join the group. As Thomas highlighted, it can be presential during our physical meetings, but also uh, remote participation and in between meetings, uh, that is a part of our working methods. So our, uh, we would like to encourage presence of the table, the head table, but we know you, you guys are very, very busy, very difficult to, to be here all the time. But if you have people uh, you know, back, back home that would be, could come here, they are extremely welcome to join. And most interestingly, I mean, trying to find areas that can help you with the problems that, that you're facing uh, uh, in our daily uh, you know, programs. Uh, we'd like to have that, that uh, more open and participation for that. Um, we're going to have, uh, in the, during the day, several interesting talks. So uh, today to be uh, this more open-ended, uh, more informative uh, view gathering uh, experience. and. Uh, and then the next days with um, more focused uh, discussions on things that we have already on the table with the various proposals. So uh, thank you very much for, for being here to giving us uh, your views. Uh, and I would like to uh, break now, but uh, uh, would like to take a group picture if you would uh, allow us. Uh, I think uh, Tiago can downstairs on the first floor. Yes, so we're going to like to invite you to go there uh, and join us for a group picture uh, so we can remember this this moment. Thank you very much. And uh, another round of applause for the